guys happy wednesday how are you today well it's a lovely wednesday where i'm at it is warm oh my goodness actually we are having a heat wave warning uh that's how hot it is today outside outside um so how are you doing i pray that you are well i hope things are going good for you i hope that you're in a good place today you know what and even if you're not in a the best of places you I, I i am just here to continue to encourage our spirits in the lord i want to encourage you i want to encourage you in your walk i want to encourage you in your faith i want to encourage you to hold on i want to encourage you and inspire you and empower you with the word of god so i'm so grateful that you are here today so come on in guys and those of you who are here um you know feel free to drop it in the chat say hello let me know you're here and invite someone you know to to come along to be encouraged in the word it is a lovely day to worship god to thank god to look to him to find hope in him and that's why we meet here every week at this time so if this is your first time i am karen althea and this is karen althea ministries and this is what we do here every week every wednesday at 4 30 eastern time that is and so i'm so grateful for you all of you who continue to join all of you who are in uh, continue to encourage and inspire us all of you who are encouraging others who join thank you for being here uh, and so you know i just pray today that the blessing of the lord will be on you and your household that his peace will be with you that his glory will prevail over you that his praise will be on your lips that you will find reason today to praise him and that's why i'm here to remind us of that because i know we go through these weeks you know we're all stuck in this kind of place where my goodness it's a it's a long shot it's a long shot and some of us vacillate so much we're just going like this like the hands of a clock like a pendulum we're just swinging and one minute you're up and you feel amazing and the next day you're just knocked down cold and so this kind of midweek inspiration is to really just give you hope and to connect with you to remind you you're not alone and to also remind you you don't have to be alone despite what you're going through there's someone else or there's someone who if they knew they could reach out to you or there's someone you can connect with just to say you know this is where I'm at and hey there's no shame in not being okay sometimes it's okay not to be okay and I want to remind you of that. So welcome, guys. Hi, Sister Donna. I see you. Hi, Sister Juliet. Hey, Sister Shika. All of these wonderful, powerful women of God so far in the house. At least they have said hello, so I know you are here. God bless you, all of you, for joining. As usual, want to do some uh, quick housekeeping matters to remind you of our Bible study in the Haven of Healing Ministries tomorrow night. That is Thursday night at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time and I want to remind you to join us if you don't have a Bible study group that you join or maybe you're available on a Thursday night maybe you just want to be in a space where you can um, you know feel comfortable to learn to explore the Word of God and maybe even if you're a mature Christian you've been in this thing long time it doesn't matter we want you to encourage others who are newer and younger to the faith and so it's a very non-judgmental space non-threatening it's easy to be there actually it is a very informal space that you can be to share with us and I want to invite you to join us and I'm dropping the link here in the chat for you to find the link on our website um and join us there so not sure where that link went let's try that again so you know i i don't know if my computer is playing games or if it is the social media site that's playing games today but we're gonna do that again and drop that haven of healing ministries dot com we ain't gonna fuss we ain't gonna worry we ain't gonna be uh making any uh, havoc or concerns about uh what we're not seeing here it's probably just my computer maybe it is there you go see i've dropped it twice <laughs> so you know just wanted to remind you that we meet for bible study at 6 30 p.m and so that could have been my own system being delayed because now it's there so you have it twice in the chat if you click on that website you will find a link to join our bible study if not you can private message me for the link we have a recurring link for the bible study also want to remind you that we meet for all weekend services on saturday nights so if you have not yet joined the healing room hey 
you're really missing something amazing in that space. We interact, we talk about mental health challenges and illnesses and issues. We talk about where we're at. We talk about the impact of the word on us. We talk about how we were encouraged in the week. And so we want to invite you to share with us this Saturday night, and it's our Father's Day special celebration in the healing room. So join us on Saturday at 7 p.m. For another amazing night in the healing room, you can get the link to the healing room at that same website, havenofhealingministries.com. And you will see that button as well that says that says enter the healing room and you, see, you will see one that says enter the Bible study. So join us Thursday night for the Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time and join us on Saturday for the healing room experience at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So wanted to throw those out and also maybe just the fathers on here who I might not be seeing on Saturday, but to wish you happy Father's Day on Sunday when it comes. Um, blessings to all the fathers, uh, your fathers, all our listeners here right now, all the fathers, the men, the grandpas, all those men who've been positive influences in your life. Um, we pray blessing over them. And so it's good to be here with you guys. So hey Derwin I see you blessings to you and there there goes my 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 phone ringing off in the midst of this we don't want that happening right now so want to just say to you guys it is so good to be here with you today I want to encourage you from the word of the Lord today from first Kings and so you know just maybe you have your 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 Bible literally like I do your app whatever it is you can join us join us there but welcome everyone so good to have you today and I want to just say to you that God is good his grace is sufficient for you in spite of what you're going through despite the pain the issues the heartache the drought that you might be experiencing God remains faithful he is good and so join me today as we share from 1 Kings chapter 18. There are a few verses from verses 41 to 45 that I, I want to read for, for us. And again, from the King James Version. So here, this is what it says. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and he put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again, seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. In verse 45 says, And it came to pass in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black, with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode, and went to Jezreel. Now, I'm fascinated by the story this week because it brought a number of things, I'm going to say, to my mind and to my spirit. And I want to just share with you today on what I consider to be, for me, the message that comes out of the story, that your drought will end. Your drought will end. And if you look at the history of the chapters preceding 1 Kings chapter 18, from where we read, the chapters before tell us in truth how, you know, when you look at chapter 16, the text tells us in the last two verses there, 33, 34, that Ahab was the worst king in Israel. There was none before him at that time when he was king over Israel before the Lord. He was the worst king. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So much so that Hiel, who was under his leadership when he was rebuilding the foundations of the, of Jericho and, and the gates, Hiel sacrificed his oldest child, his firstborn, and his youngest. Sacrificed them in the foundation and the gates of the city of Jericho. And, and that, when you think about it, to sacrifice your children 
in building something, the blood sacrifice, offering your children. That was wicked, but that happened on the Ahab. And, you know, Elijah knowing this, Elijah prophesied to Ahab that, look, there will be no rain for three years until I say that it's going to fall. That was a prophecy that came out of the wrath he felt for what Ahab was doing and how Ahab was leading Israel. And so here is a period of drought. Now, when you read James, James chapter 5 in the New Testament, verses uh, 17 and 18, tell us that this Elijah prophesied that there would be no rain for three years and six months. So we get the context here in 1 Kings that it was for, for three years there was no rain. But James was so specific with it that it were, there were three years and six months when there was no rain. Now, when I picture that and think of it in light of what we are experiencing, I think of these months, almost three years going with this pandemic. We are way past two and a half years now when you consider at the time this pandemic came about and, and how people have been. It, it's been a rough time. We've been on the edge. People have been going through tough situations. It's been a hard time for people. I mean, some persons were, were already experiencing so many hardships that we had around us. And the pandemic worsened it for many persons. The losses, the, the grief, the brokenness in these times, the, the, the inability sometimes to care for friends, for loved ones, for your own family. Lots of things have been going down in this time. Lots. But, you know, when I think of it, I, I can't help but think of the fact that that was the situation that Elijah and, other, and, the, and, and the, the children of Israel experienced in their time. No rain, drought for three years and six months. Wow. Can you imagine no rain? Can you imagine nothing no rain to saturate to continue to replenish the water tables of the earth no rain to continue to cause the rivers and the streams to flow no rain imagine using up the reserves like many of us have used up our reserves or reserves in our own tolerance or reserves in our resources or reserves in finances or reserves in so many things sometimes in the friendships that we have and there is a lack because there is a drought that we are experiencing. And this is similar to the drought that the people of God experienced, prophesied through the prophet of God, Elijah. And then by, this is in verse chapter 17, and then by chapter 18, the Lord told Elijah, I am going to send rain. Go tell Ahab, go stand before him. Don't be afraid because I'm going to send rain. Now, all of that transpired before the rain was how we know that, the you know, Elijah thought he was the only one left. And then all the Baal prophets who wanted to kill him, who were colluding to just kill anything that named God, you know, the prophets of God. And we know the showdown, the, the, the showdown on Mount Carmel and what happened and how God proved himself by fire despite the saturated wood and the trenches and everything. And, and immediately after this kind of activity, remember Ahab has not been eating well because there's drought. He, he, he couldn't maneuver the situation of the land. It was difficult to go through, to lead a people. And God had this massive showdown on Mount Carmel in, 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 in the midst of telling Elijah that he's going to send rain. And Elijah told it to Ahab. Now, Elijah said to him, go home and eat. Stop fretting. Get up and eat. Eat and drink because rain is going to come. But hear me, in this great drought. Now, this was a point that got me that, that, that the prophet prophesied that there would be great drought. Then God said to him, I'm going to bring rain. And this prophet came and announced to Ahab the king and said, go and eat, relax yourself, you know, get up, stop being depressed and sad and gloomy. God's going to send rain. Rain is going to come. And of course, Ahab did that. Ahab believed. Ahab went and he ate and he drank because there is a sound 
of abundance of rain. And I don't know if somebody listening to me today understand that you're in a drought right now, but there is a sound of abundance of rain. And I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound that your morning is coming. Your rain is coming. But there is more to it than just believing that. The prophet prophesied it. But look what happened here. While Ahab went about his business to eat and to drink and to be merry because Ahab believed the word. Ahab believed the word. He didn't have anything else to do but to go and eat and drink. And he started to get comfortable. The prophet prophesied there would be no rain. Now he says that there's going to be rain. The wicked king believed no, that blew my mind. He never fussed. He never contested. And you know why? Because he just saw how God destroyed all the Baalist prophets, all of them on Mount Carmel. And Ahab had no doubt. And so many of us, so many of us who've seen and witnessed and experienced the power of Almighty God, we fail to believe. Yet Ahab the king who did more evil in the eyes of God than any king before him over Israel. That man believed the word of the prophet. That challenged me. That really challenged my spirit because he got up and he ate and he drank. And look what the man of God did. The one who received the word from God. Elijah didn't go sit, fold his arms, and say, okay, God, just do your thing now because you said it, you know, and I believe it and it settles it and it's done. The text tells us that in verse 42, that Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel, the place where God just proved himself. And he cast himself down on his face before Almighty God. So, you know, many times God promises promises us many things promises us through prophecies we receive promises us through um, him telling us in our spirit ourselves promises us through his word wherever he promises and it comes to us and it comes to our lives and it comes to our spirit and we just believe that that's it but there's work when I looked at what the prophet did in this moment wow it moved me to understand that God told him and he believed and he still went on his face with great prayer before Almighty God. So your great drought that's taking place in your life right now, that has been happening over your life even before the pandemic, that seem like it is here to consume you and to destroy you and to kill you because you're parched, you are dry, you are broken, you're cracked from all this drought. Hear me, there must be great prayer that ought to follow despite the prophecy. We're going to believe, but we're going to pray. Elijah believed God, but he went on his face before almighty God on his knees broken down before God and he prayed and he prayed great prayer in faith in great faith because how do we know that he sent his servant to go and look go and look when you order something you keep looking if the package is going to come you keep looking at your front door you keep looking in your in your mailbox you keep looking where, wherever you expect that delivery you keep checking the email to see if it says that delivery has taken place we keep looking because we trust and we believe the process that we ordered it it's going to come god promised you and yes you ordered it and he says the package is on the way Elijah fell on his face. What an example for us today. To not cease praying, even in the belief, keep praying and believing in that prayer. Great prayer, great faith. He sent his servant to go and check. The servant came back and said, boss, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing. My God, some of us, God has said he's going to do it. And for the last five years, it's been nothing. For the last three, it's been nothing. There's nothing, not a sign. 
nothing and, and we begin to believe that it's not going to happen but Elijah didn't give up on that he said to his servant go again even if you have to go seven times go again go again so hear me somebody even if you have to go seven times go again even if you have to fall on your face a hundred times go again even if it's going to take you another two years go again go again the drought will end because God says it will. But that was after Elijah continued to pray. That's when we really saw it happen. He sent the servant and he said, go again, even if it means seven times. Seven is really complete. It means you're not going to give, you'll keep going right to the very end, to the very end. So don't lose hope today. Keep going stay on your face before him stay on your knees before him keep believing and your prayer you keep praying doesn't mean that you don't believe because that's what he says every time he prayed he sent the servant and the servant come back boss there's nothing not a sign keep going and the text says and it came to pass at the seventh time when the fullness of time at the time, the opportune time, when God says, this is it now. Hear me. If God says it, it must come to pass. We're not asking. We're not wondering. If he says it over you, if he spoke it to you, it must come to pass. How you wait for it is the issue here. How you wait. Sit down and vex with God. Be annoyed and upset and highly triggered. Is that how we wait? Or do we wait in faith, great faith believing? Do we wait in great prayer believing? I'm going to pray till I see it happening. I'm going to believe God till it falls right at my doorstep. I'm going to keep hope alive until it's delivered right in my inbox. I'm going to keep praying. He said, go and look again and again and again and again because God cannot lie. His words cannot fall just futile on the ground he says heaven and earth will pass before one jot or tittle of this word pass he cannot lie he said it he said it and he will bring it to pass but elijah waited on his knees wow now that that for me was like God already told this man in the previous chapter, chapter 18, verse 1, the Lord said, go show yourself to Ahab, for I will send rain upon the earth. So he knew rain was going to come. So why did he bother to pray? Because he chose a posture in his wait. Every time we wait on God, we choose a posture. Some of us choose to be miserable and angry and bitter and impatient and impossible sometimes. Some of us choose to wait by making life a living hell for everybody else around us because we're so angry and upset at God. We're so angry that something's not happening. We're so deflated and disappointed. Some of us wait in depression and guilt. Some of us wait in all kinds of misery and irritability. But this man, this prophet of God chose to wait in faith and in prayer. Now that's a lesson for my spirit today. I pray it will be a lesson for you. Go and look again. I don't see it. Keep going. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Keep checking your email. You don't see it yet, but it's coming. Keep checking your mailbox. You don't see it yet, but it's coming. It has to come. It has to come because it's God's promise to you and his promises are yes, and amen. So your drought will end. It must end. And so after that great wait in great faith and great prayer, then the text says that the seventh time, the seventh time, you see how God honors our faith? You see how God honors our faith? The seventh time, the servant went and he says, I see, I don't see any rain, but I see a little cloud, like a fist. Just, just a little bit, just, just a little bit. I see a little mustard seed. 
Come on, somebody. I see a little mustard seed. I see a tiny bit of something. God can work with your tiny bit. God can work with your tiny bit. He says if you have faith as small as a mustard seed. As small as a mustard seed. And he says it as well in Matthew 10. He says that the mustard seed is the smallest seed. Yet it grows into the massive, large, massive tree. So your faith is where it looks right now a little, a little, it almost look wimpy. It's a small thing. But even that, God can use your tiny cloud, your little cloud, your little cloud. And that little cloud was enough for the man in faith. He says, aha, uh -huh, that's the first sign. And so Ahab said to, to uh, Elijah said to Ahab, prepare your chariots. Get yourself ready because rain is on the way. Hear me somebody? You've been praying, you've been believing. Well, there's a little cloud for your rain is on the way. The drought will end. It must end. The drought will end. It must end for God says it will. And your rain is on the way. The text says, and it came to pass that the heavens, the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was great rain. Yeah? Your great drought will cause you, and it should cause you, to stay in great faith. On your knees in great prayer. Believe in God that your tiny, your minor cloud, your tiny bit of cloud of hope and belief will produce great rain. Great rain. Because it's the promise of God to you. It won't always look like this. The heavens will open in your favor. But it's where you put yourself in the process of the wait. Because the promise is already made. How do you wait for it? How do you wait for it? We wait for everything else expectantly. You know when you pay that online purchase and it's off your card. You stress more about the card but you're excited about the package that's coming. You wait expectantly. That's how Elijah waited on the promise of God. He says, go look again. Keep looking. Go if you have to go seven times. Go look again. Keep going. Keep going. Because it's coming to you. So change your posture in your wait. If you haven't been waiting in the right way. You've been mad because God, you said it and I can't see it yet. And that's your wait. Well, no wonder you're still waiting. No wonder we are still waiting. Wait with great faith, great expectation. In prayer, great prayer. He kept praying his face between his legs. Trust in God to do what only he can do. So your drought will end. It must end. But I pray that you will wait in the right posture before God. Looking, knowing that this much, this tiny bit of cloud can yield a hurricane, can yield oceans, can yield great rain in the presence of Almighty God. God bless you today. Keep hope alive. It won't always look like this. The heavens will open in your favor. Thank you so much for being here. I pray today that his peace will be within your walls and his prosperity within your gates. Love and blessings. I want to invite you to join me again next week at the same time right here on Facebook Live, 4.30 Eastern Time. This is where we meet and encourage each other in the spirit and the power and the vein and the rhythm of the Holy Ghost. This is what we do here. We lift our spirits up. We open ourselves before God. We receive of Him that we are pumped up and energized to keep going, to keep going because we all get to these places or places of doubt and hopelessness, and we all get to disappointing periods in our lives. But we are here to bring hope alive, that God is faithful. And if he promised, and you're waiting in the right vein, expectation, yes, expectation, great faith believing, he will show up. He will show up. He will show up. And so I'll see you tomorrow night 
in the Haven of Healing Ministry, 6.30 p.m. for our Bible studies. Can't wait to see you there. And uh, uh, we also look forward to meeting you in the Healing Room as well this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, where we have another move of the amazing power of Almighty God. Uh, see you again next week, Thursday or Saturday, or right here again next Wednesday. Blessings.